Hey, this is Sam on Quirky Thoughts. When we destroy things in the physical world, it transforms into something else. Nothing completely disappears. For example, I recently went camping, and at the camp, we had, I don't know, say 50 pounds of wood on the first day. When we left, we had a little less than a pound of ashes left. The law of conservation of matter states, loosely, that nothing is created or destroyed. It merely changes form. So what happened was that when we burned the wood, the wood underwent a chemical change. The wood was broken down and reformed into other molecules and it dissipated as heat or light energy. So this got me thinking, what happens in the digital world? Where does the data go? What happens to the no longer existent mass of data that was wiped clean with just one click? Well, what happens when you delete something and then empty your recycling bin is that your computer does a simple encryption that causes your file's contents to become unlinked and scrambled. The file header which contains info on the links deleted and the actual contents of the file is then allowed to be overwritten by new data. Whenever a file is stored on a hard disk, it's not necessarily all stored together. It can be split into X number of pieces and stored randomly wherever there happens to be space available to store it. Each fragment is tagged as being linked. When you open a file, your operating system reads the header, reads all the other parts of the file, and then rewrites the entire lot on a clear space of hard drive, which is what opens whenever you open a file. Deleting it causes the link to disappear, but the data clusters can still remain until it is overwritten. This is what makes it possible for data recovery software to decrypt deleted files and make them usable again. This is equivalent to wanting to recycle a book. You put the book in a box to send to a paper recycling faculty. When you first delete your book, it is still intact because you can easily pick it back up and read it by pulling it out of the box, aka the recycle bin. But when you send the book into the recycling faculty, emptying your bin, they rip off the cover and put the page of your book in a pile of other pages to be recycled. The text and pages of your book, equivalent to the data of your file, are still there, but without the cover binding it all together, it is much harder to locate all the pages and put it back together. So obviously, the quicker you can recover, the better. So much like the physical universe, in the digital universe, matter, or data space, isn't created or destroyed. It is simply reused or transferred into something else. So let's flip the switch here. Let's say that our world has a certain amount of gigabytes available for use, and everything is data. Cars, TVs, cell phones, oxygen, water, people, and maybe even our souls. Take for example, evolution and extinction. What if our universe sought a natural balance? And for there to be balance, things needed to be compressed down or deleted for new things to come. Now obviously, there are already explanations for extinction and evolution, but think of this as the overall reason why those events are happening. So even when humans affect the climate so much that the species go extinct, or when humans hunt and poach species to extinction, it's the natural universe at work. What if, in the beginning, of our world, everything took up a lot of the available space in the hard drive. Everything was bulky and large, and there couldn't be a lot of separate data files. But as time went on, the computer we exist on began to smooth us out, compress us down, and reformat us so we don't take up as much space as we used to. So more of us humans started popping out. In 10,000 BC, there was roughly 1 million people in the world. In 2000 BC, there was roughly 27 million people in the world. And in 0 AD, there was roughly 200 million people in the world. In 8,000 years, the world's population multiplied 200 times what it used to be. Let's look at the more recent census. In 1850, there was roughly 1 billion, 171 million people in the world. 100 years later, the population doubled to nearly two and a half billion people in the world. As of right now, September of 2013, there are 7,110,934,542 and counting. You can check the current population on www.census.gov poplock. It'll be in the description below. The exponential growth of the human population within the past 2,000 years is incredible. That is a lot of data being wrote and rewritten. So think about this. When someone dies, their data is thrown into the recycling bin and emptied out for reuse. It is scrambled out, and the links to connect the said person's data to form the person are gone. But what if we could eventually find a way to link matter together to form things that no longer exist, like people? 
Imagine relinking Alexander the Great, relinking him in his prime, and seeing how he would react to the world today. Or relinking Abraham Lincoln, or Benjamin Franklin, or even Albert Einstein. Just the thought sends chills down my spine. Not saying we exist because there's a giant hard drive full of the universe's data is a bit of a stretch. But if we push that thought and made the connection to energy, matter, and data even remotely theoretically possible, think of all the possibilities. We'd be able to relink anything that ever was. It's an interesting thought to say the least. But that was my quirky thought of the week. If you liked the video, subscribe, like, and favorite. It really does help. If you hated it, like it anyway. I usually post videos at least once a week on Fridays, so make sure to tune in. Thanks, and this has been Quirky Thoughts with Sam.